Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Force of Nature. I love this product. I use it to clean my counters. I use it to clean uh, my stove, my tables. Um, I even spray it on my carpet. Once I test it to make sure that it wouldn't, um, I wouldn't have any problems using it on my carpet, I use it on my carpet. Um, I clean my bathrooms. I love using it around the toilet. Um, it has replaced a lot of my different cleaners. I feel confident using it after cutting raw chicken or um, raw beef or pork. And so I love this product. Um, I am not an affiliate of them. I'm not endorsed by them, but I do love it. So I wanted to share it with you. I'm gonna show you today a little secret <laughs> of how to I make my own DIY um, solution for this. You can buy the capsules for this. And honestly, that's probably um, the safest way to do it just because it's everything is pre-measured but if you don't mind doing a few extra steps this is a really great way for you to be able to make the solution at home it's a lot cheaper and as long as you are really careful about measuring and checking um, some different things it can be a really great way to make it when you buy force of nature you get this little device and this is how you make the solution they also give you some of these little um, capsules that have salt and vinegar um, in them so that you can make the solution because it uses salt and water. The vinegar just brings the pH down, but it uses the salt and water to make the um, solution and it's hypochlorous acid. And then you also get the charger. So that is what you'll get when you order the Force of Nature. Um, and I'm gonna show you now how you can replicate these capsules. Um, again, if you're going to do that, you need to be careful that you measure everything appropriately because you are making hypochlorous acid. You wanna make sure that you're making the correct um, solution because you want it to be safe. Hypochlorous acid is an amazing solution. It can be used as a sanitizer, a disinfectant. Hospitals use it. Um, some hotels are using it for cleaning. It is so safe. Um, you can, if you look on the Force of Nature website, they say that you can use it like on baby toys, baby pacifiers. Um, it's a really, really safe solution. It also has amazing cleaning power. And I know a lot of people are um, concerned about flu. This year, um, a lot of people are concerned about coronavirus and it actually can kill the coronavirus as well. It's an awesome product. I keep it with me in my purse all the time in just like a little bottle um, that I can spray on my hands. I can spray on the shopping cart. I can spray it on my baby's hands. Owen is 10 months old. I'll spray it on his hands. Um, Ethan, he's three. I use it on him as well and I feel safe using it on them. And I also know that it is sanitizing. So I really like this. I'll link a few articles below about hypochlorous acid so that you can um, learn a little bit about it. And also I'll link below all of the tools that I'm using today to make my own solution in order to make the hypochlorous acid. So you'll see that all down below. Um, like I said, I do not, I'm not sponsored at all by Force of Nature, but I love this product so much. Like I'm I'm really passionate about it. In fact, my friends are always asking me like, are you selling that? Is that a multi-level marketing company? No, it's not. It's just a normal company, but I just love the product. I love that it has a very light scent. Like it's not very strong. It, some people um, compare it to like the smell of a swimming pool. So, um, and I also like that when I'm wiping my counters, I know that I'm like disinfecting them too. So. Let's get started. Let me show you how to make this solution. Okay, to make your own solution, you're going to need to buy salt. And the salt that you buy, um, you wanna make sure that there's no additives in it. So this is a really good brand. It is Diamond Crystal Kosher Salt. And if you look at um, the ingredients here, if you look at the ingredients here, um, the only ingredient is salt. So you know that this is good to use. You wanna make sure that it doesn't have like any anti-caking ingredients or anything like that. Some people use like pickling salt. Um, just make sure that your salt is just plain old salt. So we've got our salt here. And if you find this at the store, it is so cheap. I think I spent like um, under $3 for this huge thing of salt. So it is three pounds. Um, also vinegar, um, just regular white vinegar. You're gonna want the one, I think most of them are the 5% 5%, um, 5 acidity. So that's the vinegar that I'm using. You don't need a big thing like this, but I just had this already. Um, sometimes I'll like use it in a, my laundry and stuff. So I always buy just like the big one. Um, you'll also need a little scale. So the, you can buy any kind of small scale like this. You just wanna make sure that it's a gram scale and then it goes 
and then it goes to 0 0.01 grams, not 0.1, but 0 0.01, because you wanna make sure that you're getting the right amount of salt. Um, you also may wanna buy these um, chlorine strips. You can't see it because the sticker's here, but it's H-Y-D-R-I-O-N, so Hydrion. So these strips are good to have because then you know how powerful your solution is. Force of Nature says that their solution is between 200 to 220 ppm, I believe. Um, and so this will let you know how strong it is. Um, if you're using it like on your hands, you may want like a weaker solution. And if you're using it for disinfectant, you might want the full 200. So um, the nice thing about these going up to a thousand is sometimes um, I've been talking with a lot of friends and when they use their force of nature, whether they're using the capsules or if they're using their homemade mixture, it's giving 500 parts per million. So you're going to want to um, check your parts per million and either adjust how much salt you're using or um, dilute it. So those are some things to keep in mind. Um, the last thing that you're going to need are um, pH strips and these are super cheap. I got them on Amazon. Um, I don't even think that it's a specific brand. I'll link the ones I bought down below, but really any pH strips will work. Some people get a digital pH reader and that works as well. Um, but the strips are just super cheap and I'll show you. Um, you're going to, when you first start, you're probably gonna wanna use um, a strip to test the solution before you run it and then after you run it. Um, after you run it is really important because you want to make sure the pH is between four and six. Um, ideally, you want it to be about 5.5. If your pH is off, that means that you may not be making um, like full hypochlorous acid. You might be making um, like a less percentage and then a different percentage of a different kind of chemical. Um, I'll link a um, I'll link something down below that shows you more about that as well. We're gonna start with the scale. And I'm gonna go ahead and open it up here. I like to use just like a little um, medicine measuring cup that's been washed really good. I actually just use this one for making the solution so I know that there's no like medicine residue in there. Um, you just need something small that won't weigh too much on this little scale. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on. And the numbers here should just say zero. If you have anything else, you're gonna to wanna to click tear so that um, it's zeroed out. And we're gonna go ahead and measure our salt. So I have our kosher salt. I'm gonna go ahead and just add this really slowly to the measuring cup or to the yeah, the little medicine measuring cup. Um, so I am going to actually just put this right at about 0.6. Um, when I do it um, at 0.7, which is um, what some people have measured um, from the original Fawn capsules or what their estimate was, um, I get 500 parts per million. I'm gonna try to do 0.6 so that I get lower parts per million because according to the Fawn website, we should be getting about 200 to 220 parts per, mi per million. So right now we are at 0.6. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add our vinegar. Now the thing with vine the vinegar is that this really is going to vary depending on your water. So my water, when I measure it with the pH strips, is about a seven on the on the scale, and I need to lower it to about between a four and a five um, in order for it to be the right pH when it is done. So I'm going to go ahead and hit tear and clear this out. This step for you may take a couple times for you to get it right. So you may wanna start low and work your way up. So. For me, I know, because I've done this several times, that I need this um, for the grams to say about six and a half, so 6.5-ish, um, in order for me to get the right pH at the end. And so I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up. But for you, you may want to start with less, add it to the water in the machine, and then add more if needed. So for me, we're gonna start and um, that went really fast. Usually I try to pour that a little slower, but it's harder with my left hand. All right, so we are at 5.88. I know you probably can't see this, or actually now it's saying 5.9. So I know I'm gonna add a little bit more. If this were you, you may wanna start around three or so, and then add it to your water. You know, mix this up, add it to your water, make sure you know it's well incorporated in here, test the pH. 
If the pH is giving you between four and five, then you're probably gonna get the right pH at the end. So this is the step that may take you a couple times um, to practice, but I'm at 5.89 it says right now, so I'm gonna just add a tiny bit more. Actually, I'm gonna do it with my right hand. <laughs> so hopefully I can be really careful. And just add a little bit more. vinegar and we're at 6.32 or 6.33 as long as it's like around there 6.5 actually would be you know probably about what I need but this such a small amount is not gonna make a big difference for me and so instead of just trying to <laughs> add tiny drops at a time I'm gonna call that good and so we're gonna go ahead and add this to the water in the um, force of nature machine here and we'll check the pH as long as the pH looks between four and five then I'll go ahead and run the machine and then we'll check the pH after I just added the water where you have it up to the fill line here um, there's a little fill line right here so I, I added my water before I add this I need to make sure that I'm really careful and I stir up the salt really well you don't want any flakes of salt and so I'm gonna take a minute here it doesn't take very long to dissolve this and I'm just gonna check and make sure I don't see any little pieces of salt in here. Okay, once it is dissolved, we are going to go ahead and add it to our water. Now, before I measure pH, I do wanna make sure that, it, I, that I give it a second to mix around because obviously if I'm pouring it from the top, it might not give us like the exact right pH. Um, so I'm gonna give that just a second to kind of really mix into the water. All right, so I've given this little bit of time to make sure that the vinegar has um, incorporated into the water. We're gonna go ahead and check the pH. So let me go ahead and grab a strip. Um, if you want these strips to last a little bit longer, you totally can like use like a half of a strip or even less. I just like to do half because I like them big enough that I can hold. So I just ripped this one in half right here and um, we're gonna go ahead and check the pH of this. So carefully I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a tiny bit on my strip and um, there is a little picture here that will tell us what the pH is so I'm looking here and it's definitely hopefully you can see this good in the light um, so the color here is really close to a five I don't know if you can see that really well um, it's really close to a five it's definitely not a six. So I'm gonna call this good. As long as it's between four and five, it will give me a good pH. So we're gonna go ahead and run the machine. I'm gonna plug it in. And there's just a little plug in the back. Oh, you can't see that. There's a little plug in the back here. And we're gonna turn it on. Now it does take a few minutes to run, um, but right away you will see the bubbles starting to form here. I can't see. You wanna see it too? Mm -hmm. There you go. Do you see the bubbles forming in here? Yeah. All right, so you'll see at the bottom that this bottom part is blue. That means that it's working right now. As it finishes, it will slowly turn green all the way around until you get to the end. And once it's all the way green, we will know that it is done. So you can see it's starting to turn green right here. It's just been about a minute. So we're going to go ahead and let it finish turning green all the way around. Okay, so while the machine is running, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about pH. So as you saw, um, I know that when I'm adding about 6.5 grams of vinegar, I know that I'm gonna have the right pH before so that after I have the right pH for my hypochlorous acid. Um, so that this step is really important um, to measure it before. I Now that I know the pH of my water, I've done this several times, um, I don't, I feel pretty confident not checking the pH before, but I always check it after just to make sure that, I'm, that I am making the right kind of solution. Um, but when you're first starting, you definitely wanna check it before. So. Um, you may want to start when you're using your scale and you're using your little measuring cup and you're using the salt. You may want to start with adding less vinegar. Maybe add 
um, three grams of vinegar. Mix it up with the salt, add it to the water, let that mix around really good, give it some time to incorporate into that water in the device, and then measure the pH. If you're finding that it is still a little bit high, maybe you're at like a six or a seven, then you know that you're going to need to add a little bit more vinegar. And so you can go back to your gram scale, um, add, put this on your gram scale and add a little bit of vinegar. And then, okay, maybe you added another one gram or another two grams of vinegar. Then pour that in, mix it around. And so total you've added maybe five grams of vinegar total. So this step is gonna take a few, maybe a little bit of trial and error to make sure you get the right pH before so that you get the right pH after. As you can see, it is now green. So it is finished and there's a lot of bubbles. Um, on the mix in the mixture as well. So you don't know if you can see those in the camera. Um, so we know that it is all finished. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into my bottle and we'll go ahead and also measure the pH and the chlorine, um, the free chlorine um, parts per million. So let's go ahead and check that. The first thing I'm going to check is the pH because I wanna make sure that's correct. Also, these ones are a little bit more expensive than these strips. So I might as well check this first and make sure it's correct. Um, so again, I'm aiming at four to six. Um, I believe um, Fawn wants this to be 5.5 is the ideal. And so we're gonna go ahead and dip it into the solution just a little bit. And you can see it's like a little bit wet right here. Now, 5.5 on these strips is going to look a lot like the natural color of the chart. So here's six, here's five, and it's going to look a lot like the natural color of this strip. So if we hold it in between here, you can see it really does look really close to six and really close to five. Like it's almost hard to tell which one it is. You really want it to be between four and six, but um, I always really aim at trying to get between five and six. So as you can see, hopefully you can see this really well. Um, and we definitely have a good solution here. I think it is perfect. So with that being done, we'll go ahead and grab one of our um, chlorine strips here. Okay, so we just dipped it in and we are reading here. It's not quite as dark. Hopefully the camera picks this up really well. I know sometimes with glares, not quite to 500, but it's also maybe, well, I guess it's really close to 250. It might be just barely more than 250, but it's not quite that dark as 500. So I would say maybe between 250, 300 would probably be my guess for this. And I feel comfortable using that for my family. Again, um, Fawn says 200 to 220. So if you wanted to use a tiny bit less salt and experiment with that, you could as well. So now that I know I have a safe solution, I know that I am making hypochlorous acid. It is the right pH. I also know that I have a high parts per million. This tells me that it is going to be effective. Like it's going to be able to be used as a disinfectant, uh, disinfectant on my counters. I could use it on my hands as a hand sanitizer. I know that this is going to be killing all the germs. And this tells me that I'm making hypochlorous acid because it is in the right pH, like the final product. We are ready with this. We're gonna go ahead and add it to our bottle. So um, I always, the Force of Nature comes with a bottle and I actually really like this spray bottle a lot. It has a really thick stream though, so it's, um, when you want to like soak something or if you have like a really messy space, this is really great. Honestly, I usually keep one in my, sorry, you can hear my baby. <laughs> you, I usually keep one in my bathroom and one in my kitchen. Um, this one I just bought off Amazon. I'll link it down below. It's just a glass bottle. Honestly, I went for this bottle because it had decent reviews and I like that it's clear like this bottle and I kind of went for the look rather than functionality and I don't know I figured a glass bottle would be kind of nice so I'm gonna go ahead and add it to this one because I'm all out this one I usually keep in my kitchen just because it's bigger and I use it more in my kitchen than I use it in my bathroom so sorry I should probably do that at a better angle okay so I'm just gonna fill it up when it's pouring, it smells kind of strong. And I think it's because of all the bubbles that are in there, they capture kind of like the no, smell wow. that's emitted as it's being made. And so once I actually spray this on my countertop, oh, and you're so noisy. Once I actually spray this on my countertop, like it really doesn't smell. It smells honestly to me like a swimming pool. 
Um, see, now it makes me want to clean. <laughs> um, it reminds me like a light swimming pool scent. So to me, I, I really like this scent a lot because it's not like overpowering and it smells clean, but it doesn't smell like, like bleach. That is how you make the DIY um, fawn capsules. Again, if you're going to do this, do this at your own caution. You wanna make sure that you're measuring everything correctly so that you're making the right kind of solution. You don't want it to be dangerous. If you plan on using this on any kind of clothing, rugs, anything like that, you're going to want to make sure you test a little area before you go and douse it because um, you wanna make sure that um, it's color fast and that you're not gonna have um, this you know, change the color or anything like that. I know that with some things, um, you have to be careful, but I haven't had any problems. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, let me know down below or also let me know what your favorite way to use Force of Nature is. Thanks for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please like it and subscribe so you can see my future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.